Okay, well, hi everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Liam Hartree here with another episode of Presenting Champions. Today's episode is uh, 231, I believe. So uh, we've got a great guest on today, Scott Mason, known as the Tan Man, professional bare knuckle pit fighter for Spartan Bare Knuckle Fight Club, one of the toughest combat sports out there anywhere. You know, in that sport, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He was eight feet by eight feet, brutal as it gets. But as well as that, as always in my interviews, it's not just all the fighting stuff. This man today, Scott, he has a great uh, backstory in terms of the things he's overcome, the things he's pushed through in his life to get where he is today. So there's, as always, there's some hope and some inspiration and, and all that good stuff as well. Um, so, Champ, thank you for coming on the show, my friend. It's great to have you on here. It's my absolute pleasure. I'm absolutely blown away. I'm, I'm being interviewed by yourself. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Well, thank you for the kind words. And like I said to you at the, at the beginning just now, um, before we were recording, it's two things. I mean, one of it is you're a hell of a fighter. I mean, you know, that's one thing, great fighter. But as well as that, you know, you've got that inspirational story and you've overcome a lot of stuff and uh, you're always positive and, and humble. So, you know, with those two things, it's great to have you on the show. Um, let's go back in time. I mean, obviously, we'll talk about everything with fighting and with, you know, pit fighting and all that side of things but take us back a little bit to you know where you grew up where you're from um if you have any fighting background back then or just let's go back to your early years basically you know uh so i i grew up in bradford um i'm from um <laughs> i grew up in bradford i've been um, i've got i grew up with four sisters um never knew my real dad um quite a bit of a class clown um never really had a, a great positive influence in my life um or i guess uh, i wasn't really that close to my family growing up and i um communication wasn't um a great thing um from what i remember um and it's you know trying to communicate how i, how I felt around things um and I, I were a little bit me a little bit messed up, I guess, as a child. Um, I um, as as far as fighting experience when I, I I you know I took a a bit of karate when I was younger, um, but that's about as far as it went. Um, if I remember if I remember rightly, like I always used to run from fights. Like they weren't you know I'd find myself in scraps now and again, um, but that you know that that fighting was not my background fighting was not my background or we're, um, we're always seeking the next thrill i guess yeah uh, yeah okay cool so so you're obviously quite quiet growing up and you know this was uh this was something that was going on now one of the things i've seen and you you know you'll have to um Tell me a bit more about the timeline of this, because I'm I'm not sure about the timeline of this, but I've seen on your Facebook and things like that about recovery, basically about recovery from addiction. You know, I've seen bits and pieces about like uh, some of these things you've been through. Now, as I as I've said, you know, I'm obviously finding out some of this as we're talking, which is cool. Um, and, and I also respect, by the way, that certain things are very um you know, they, they are personal, so they're not going to be super easy to talk about. But it's just, like I said to you at the beginning, the inspiration, the hope, you know, the fact that you've overcome some of these things, other people can as well. You know, I mean, that's that's what you show, uh, as well as chasing your dreams as a fighter. That's the other thing that, you you know, you show just by being you, if, if you get what I mean. So when it comes to that sort of thing, at what point will you get sort of getting involved in some of the some of these sort of questionable things and, and a little bit of drugs and was that quite early on or was that was that much later in, in your life type of thing uh i first start first started I, I was very young when i first started smoking cigarettes um i must have been seven eight when i first started smoking cigarettes and then you know, the first time i tried cannabis around about 10 years old um and and, and i guess like most people growing up in the 90s in your teens you know you're drinking in the park cider a little bottle of white lightning and whatever else and and then by the time you're, you're leaving school you're hitting the party scene you're going to the pubs and and stuff like that and there was never there was never any 
there was never any danger or or uh, reluctance to try anything that was put in in in, in your path. You know, it were you know most I guess normal people would would say, oh no, I'm not trying that. But whereas I I, I was like, I wonder what that does. I wonder how that makes you feel because I was always trying to escape how I feel. Because I, I remember as a child, I never felt really comfortable in my own skin. There was always something I couldn't quite put my finger on. Um, and 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 I found an escapism in in using drink and 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 drugs. Um, and and I guess when you follow that path, you you you, um, you mix with the the wrong people, and and you find yourself in the wrong places at the wrong times. And and it were, I think I was about nineteen when I first tried heroin um, and crack cocaine. And and I was very naive to it. I, I I'd been um, I was selling, I was uh, kind of I guess running. It was it wasn't my it wasn't myself. I was running with a friend, and uh, again I got introduced to to a friend of his who I ended up selling selling this for. And and I and I and I thought to myself, well, if I'm ever gonna try this, this is supposed to be the best of, of the best. So um and 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 the, and the guy kind of tripped me he, he, he were you know he portrayed himself to be my brother but then when he's when he's got his business head on he's screaming at you down the phone when you're not arriving at customers houses fast enough and I w- it was just destroying my uh my self-esteem and and i guess i got to that point where i you know when i thought if i'm ever going to try this i'll try it and 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 i just remember running all day long selling drugs and then I'd get home on a night and, and that would be my little escape. That would be my little escape. And um, I swear it kind of... I, I did break free from that and, and, and I managed to get back into work. And I think it was a, a few years later where that reared its head again. Um, I bumped into a friend I used to go to school with and he... Um, I remember getting a message from him saying, you know, I can see, I can feel a crack session coming on. How do you feel? And obviously I'd tried it before and, well, what's the arm? What could, what's the worst that could happen? And well, I were about to find out. Um, so that started, I, I remember I, I, I went to see him and, and, he, and he threw a bag of heroin at me as well. And he says, oh, I smoke that to come down. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. And um, I gave in and, and smoked it and, that became like a weekly thing and then it became a twice a week thing, three times a week thing. And then it were an everyday thing. And before I knew it, I was hooked. Um, and that there, there, there began the next 15 year spiral. Um, I think about three years in, three years in, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I've got myself on a prescription to, to try get myself off of off of it and uh to no joy again mixing with the wrong crowd um i was i was knocking about with a lad who was heavily into burglaries and uh we uh we committed a few of those together he he we got caught for one and he got sent to jail uh i got i got a suspended sentence and and then i just carried on on my own by the time he got out, we started doing it again, and we weren't the best burglars because we got caught. Um, and then I, I, I finally got myself sent to prison. The first time I'd ever been to prison, I was I were handed a four-year, nine-month sentence. I remember that walking up onto onto the main wing at Armley Prison, and that was just like one of the scariest experiences ever. But you put your game face on and and crack on with it. You overcome and adapt, don't you? Um, and I think I've just under two and a half years I served there. And, and when I got out, I think that the very same day I got out, I ended up buying a half ounce of cocaine with this great idea that I was going to sell it. And I ended up, ended up shoveling out most of it up my nose and just going out back on the party scene, back drinking and stuff. And, 
think it was about eight months out of prison where I found myself back on heroin. And that just went on for years and years. And then I think it was about 2018, things really, really took a, took a downward spiral. And the things that you do to, to fund that habit completely go against your models of values and principles that you were taught as a child. And I ended up, um, I ended up, well, I'd, I'd, I'd worked myself up into, into, you know, self-employment. I were, I were a plasterer and I were doing really well. And still trying to maintain my habit around that sort of stuff as well. It, it was just chaos. And, and I ended up messing that up really badly and the relationship I was in at the time. And I found myself, it, 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 eventually it took me to, it took me to begging at traffic lights. It were a really, really painful time. I remember, I remember the first time I went to go do it with somebody and I was thinking, this is wrong. This is so wrong. But it was easy money. I didn't have to work for it. I didn't have to do nothing. I just had to sit there and, and people had throw money at you all day long and I'd be able to fund my habit. And it, it's kind of crazy how comfortable that became. And um, by this time, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd come, I'd gone from, I'd long since gone from smoking to injecting. Um, and, and, I, and I'd got myself... I'd found myself in, in hospital before that with the collapsed lung, um, pneumonia, um, endocarditis, a serious heart infection, a blood infection. I was in hospital for quite some time. And then by the time I, you know, I got onto the streets and begging, I were, I'd got a, a DVT, a blood clot in my leg, uh, along with an abscess the size of my fist. Um, I couldn't walk or in hospital for another and that just continued and it, and it got worse and um, the very same guy that asked, that sent me that message all those years ago had gone off and and found recovery and, and it, well it'd been introduced to recovery it, it, it relapsed at the time we were using together and he was telling me about it about what 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 it is that I suffer from and I'm sat there I remember sat there listening to him and I'm like yeah this is me this is me and he um he gets to a point where I guess you've had enough and you want to try and you want to try and, and get out of that life because it's just it just becomes an existence you're you know you're a drain on everything and everyone around you um and you just so much pain and and he went off and he and he, and he found recovery, and um, I remember I, I were in this little bed set, cockroach infested place. It were awful, were awful. And I was just by by this time I'm just sat there waiting to die of 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 of, of this addiction. And he, um, I remember he come and dragged me out of that that flat and and, and took me to a rehab. And it was there I, I got introduced to, uh, we'll say, um, an anonymous fellowship um, where I started to learn about what it is that I actually suffered from. And, uh, and, and I, I never actually had a drug problem. You know, the drugs were never the problem. It were always me. And I guess I always knew that. But until you shown. Um, but then there's a, there's a thing about you know, you show them what it is that you suffer from and then you have to accept what it is that you suffer from and the things that you've got to do to counteract that. And I think over the next over the next two years, I was in and out of rehab, re relapse after relapse. And I'd done four stints in rehab before I were in my last relapse. And um, it just gets worse. Every time you pick up, it got worse, it got worse. It got more painful. 
and I didn't want to be here anymore. I, I did not want to be alive anymore, but my spirit did. And, the, and there were a part of me that, that, that wanted to fight. And, and so I heard about a rehab in Leeds. And so I, I got myself there. Uh, and, and at this point, I were, I were desperate. I was desperate. I mean, I didn't know how to take drugs. I, you know, somebody had to show me how to take drugs. Eventually, I had to get somebody to show me how to stay clean. And 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 I was desperate. And I and I said, just show me what to do, and I'll do it. And I took on every single suggestion, and I started running with it, and I started to change, and I started to get better. And I, I felt this overwhelming sense of peace I've never felt before in my life. And and uh, and then we're about to get onto how the fight stuff came around. Um, so I think I were about two months clean at this point. I've just done my fifth methadone detox. And um, I was scrolling through Facebook and I seen this, you know, those two 10,000 steps a day challenges that you see for, for cancer charities and stuff. Oh, do you know what? I think that'd be a great that'd be a great indirect kick to my mum's husband that passed of that horrible disease. Um and, and so I undertook that. And and when that finished, I, I felt really good about myself and I thought, what do I do next? And I remember scrolling through Facebook again and then up up, up pops uh white collar boxing. I thought, I can do that, I'm gonna do that. You know, I remember seeing while well, I was using, I remember seeing the thing that came around in lockdown, the quarantine fight club, and, and some of the fighters on there are like, I could check them, I could check them, you know. And um, and so and so yeah, I, and I, I thought let's go with that. And somebody who was supporting me um, during this time uh, had been involved with, with Spartan. But he had his, uh, he had his jaw broken. Um, his name Darren Wilson, and uh, he, he took me to my first Spartan show in, in lockdown. <laughs> and uh, I ended up bumping into somebody else I was in recovery with who, who, who also fought for Spartan. And um, I remember telling him about how I'm going to do this boxing thing. And he says, you know, he told me he had a gym at his house, Lee, Cop Lee Copley, and come up sometime, I'll show you how to go on, you know, we'll do a bit of training together. And I thought, yeah, that'd be good, that'd be good. And and so I went to see him and very quickly realised how unfit I was and, and how much I actually is the boxing. You know, I've got a newfound respect for boxers today. Um, and so I, I committed myself to, to starting a, a boxing gym at Rock Solid. Uh, where I was introduced to Robbie Adamson as well, the former world lightweight champion, and 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 then those two kind of took me under the wing, and I, I committed to the training aspect of that, and yeah, uh, should I continue? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, mate, I got to say, what a story! I mean, before we go any further, what a story! Because, like I said to you at the beginning. Putting all of that out there from the heart, putting stuff as, you know, as personal as that out there without shame. I've got all the respect in the world for that, man, because it's not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, I mean, they do say that talking about these things is, is part of healing. So maybe that's true. But at the same time, you know, uh, it's not a question for you. I'm just saying I've got all the respect in the world for that. Do you know what I mean? So thank you. Um We'll get into the fighting things now in a moment, and I'll come back to that shortly from the point that they took you under their wing. Before we do, I just want to hone in a little bit more on on uh, some of the big changes that you made to stay clean, you know, and everything in terms of, by the sound of it, changing the people you associated with. That's got to be a big one. Uh, obviously, having something to focus on, that being the training. But... If you could just highlight some of the things um, briefly that were some of the biggest changes you had to make, because I think that will help people who are 
out there, you know, who basically are in a similar situation that you might have been in, um, and it will help them overcome it. Shout out to everyone you mentioned, by the way, Robbie Adamson, uh, Darren, you know, they've all been on this show as well. But um, yeah, let's just share. How long have you been clean as well? I mean, we, we've got to mention that. How long have you actually been living around? Uh, uh, it's, it's coming up two years now. Well done, mate. Well done. Because from what I hear with that, um, from other people I know who've been in that situation, particularly with heroin, now I, I personally have never tried it, but from what I hear of people I know who have, they say the craving, it, it sort of can stay with you for quite a while. I don't know if that's true. So two years, I mean, mad respect on that. Please do share with us a little bit about, just a little bit more about some of the changes that you made to get out of this cycle, because it was a, obviously a terrible cycle to be in. I mean, bloody hell, man, I was listening to that and I was thinking everything you were saying more and more, I was thinking it's incredible how you pulled to it. Was changing who you associated with one of the biggest parts, would you say? I change your associates. Um, the places that you frequent and and I think the the because of the physical dependence and and the overwhelming obsession to 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 use that drug just to escape the the, the withdrawals. Uh, I needed. I I personally needed. To, to, to get into a rehab structure um, mm. and, 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 and good influential people that are, that are there to, uh, to, to support you on, on your journey. But, you, you know, you, you don't have to go to rehab to get clean. There, you know, there's, there's, there's help out there other than that. Um, I, 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 had to, I had to change. I had to change everything. I had to change everything, otherwise nothing was going to change. You know, the saying goes, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And and, and I had to change it. I've got a very I've got a very twisted perception on, on life and, and and I have to my thinking can go a bit askew at times. I can see things not how quite how they actually are. And I, and I have to I have to I have to talk. I have to talk about how I'm feeling, I have to talk about what I'm thinking, I have to talk got to talk you know it's good to talk <laughs> um and and it's if if, if you, you know people that have been through the same thing that have, that have come through the other side of it you know these are the people to talk to um people that have been through addiction and have come out the other side you know these these are these are the influences that you need in your life yeah Absolutely. I mean, like I said um, at the beginning, it is uh, it, it's extraordinary. I mean, what you've come through, because a lot of people, um, well, a lot of people never make it out of that situation, you know. So the fact that that you have, um, that's a blessing in itself. And I mean, like I said, just now, just five minutes ago, talking about it without shame. I mean, I got all the respect in the world for that. Every single person, myself included, have done things that we're not proud of in our life, you know, and obviously they come in different forms and for different people it's different things. But, you know, I think that anybody who judges anybody has never really been through either that situation or something similar to that situation themselves, you know, and obviously the more you've been through things in your own life, the more empathy, you, you know, you have for people. So the fact that you're putting it out there, incredible. Um, let's move into the fighting then a little bit as well in terms of uh, Robbie Adamson and, and those guys and Darren, you know, they took you under their wing and, and these, these guys. Was it straight away you fell in love with it or was it more of a process of like um a bit of a struggle in the beginning and then realizing actually i can go far with this if if you get what i mean what was your your process with that in the early days of training in the early days of training i uh i i, I just like the whole aspect of it and, and and when i could see that i was getting fitter um and that, that just kind of you know, uh, pushed me in the right direction with it. And so I, I was just concentrating on my fitness at first and then we started to get into sparring. I remember I remember Lee saying to me, uh, Rob, Rob, are you going to jump in with Robbie tonight? And I'm like, no, I'm not, man. <laughs> I'm not jumping in the ring with that man. 
uh, but he says, no, you know, he's, he'll, he'll hold back with you and stuff. And, and it was very supportive with Robbie, you know. He, he, yeah, I'm really, really grateful to to, have, to be able to train with him. And uh, <laughs> I did end up actually getting my spleen ruptured, taking a body shot in, uh, in Sparling, not by Robbie, by another lad. And I was in intensive care for like three days. Um, and and because I've got I've got numerous blood clots in my left leg, my uh, my left leg is uh, is quite swollen. Valves that return the blood don't lock off, so the blood just falls back down. My left leg is is heavily swollen. Um, I, they had to reverse the blood uh, the blood thinning medication, and I'm on. And thankfully, it knitted back back together. They didn't have to open me up and remove my spleen. Um, and and I think it were a few weeks after that I was back 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 in the gym uh, and back again. Uh, so I said th- I think so. I, by the time I got to rock solid, I must have been about five months clean. Um, and my first fight through rock. Solid through his by championship boxing ICB was uh, just before which I won uh, first round TKO, um, and then I that was it. Then that I, I caught the bug that you know I initially just wanted to do one fight for the white collar thing, and uh, obviously I got involved with Rock Solid, who were uh, involved with Inspire Championship boxing, and I followed that route for the next few months. Um, my next fight after that was was in February. Uh, Against the guy called in Tomlinson, you know, I had I had all the, I guess the feeling I I, I were I were unbeatable, um, and I got beat <laughs> on points. Uh, I remember I remember gassing out on that fight in the first round, and the next two rounds were just awful, absolutely awful, just trying to get through it. Um, but I, I, you know, I was, I stayed on my feet the full three rounds, and 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 credit to him, uh, you know, he, he took the he took the win on that time, and he knocked me for a six, did that, and I remember going back to the gym next the next week, and I was like, oh, I'm not fighting again, and then, and then Robbie, you know, kind of spoke to me and told me about his 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 boxing, um, you know. Uh, I can't, I can't think of the word, you know, how many wins and losses it, it, it gone through. And, you know, we don't do it for the wins. We do it because we, we enjoy it. And that kind of changed my perspective again. And, 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 and I signed up for the next, for the next event for ICB in March. And uh, I trained like mad for it. And, and I ended up going the distance with another lad who were like three times the size of me. We were huge. <laughs> um, I took the win on that one, and 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 then I were I were due to fight again the next month for a different show, but that show got cancelled, and it was a week before Spartan Cage Wars, their first Spartan Cage Wars, and um, I got asked on four days' notice to to fill in and fight Manny Hamid, absolute animal, is is from military, is like lives and breathes fitness, is you know fighting is. But you know, I I always from, from, I've followed Spartan since you know April 2020, and I I I knew I was going to fight on there. I knew I was going to do it. I was just like taking the leap, and 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 I took my first cage fight bare knuckle, and and that was boxing out of the window. Then that was glove boxing out of the window. That bare knuckle is such a buzz. It is such a buzz. Even though I got my eyes split open and my face was out here, <laughs> it were yeah, it were it were it were immense. The feeling were immense. It were great. Um, but then it wasn't the pit. The cage wasn't the pit. The pit is the ultimate brutality fighting experience, you know. And that's where it it, it, it had to go. After Cage Wars, uh, I put I put my name down for the next Spartan in 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 August, just gone. And uh, Christian uh, Christian Roberts, uh, Spartan promoter, he uh, 
he he messaged me and asked um, and asked me would I be interested in a, in a in a shot at the British featherweight title against uh, the lad who just who just who just won the belt, um, Phil Pell, Pelly. Uh, you know, he asked me what I weighed. I, I, I naturally uh, I naturally walk about at, uh, at lightweight, seventy three kgs. Uh, and he asked me if I could drop to seventy and and and, and offer me a chance to fight Pelly for the British featherweight title. Um, uh, and I will, I, I was like, yeah, man, I'll, of course, of course, like you know, we do this because the dream is to get a belt. Um, you know what I mean? What what an inspiration that you know, inspiring story that would be to come from. I mean, this is the whole point of this, you know, to come from heroin addiction to to raising a a, a British title for for fighting. That'd be amazing. So yeah, of course, I wanted to do it. Um, and and so and so I set about with the weight cut and the training and you know it, it it doesn't matter how much you train if you, nothing can prepare you for how fast pace and 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 intense that pit is and uh, it it yeah it I ended up getting my eye split in the first round. Uh, my guard were was shocking. My, you know, my. I don't even think I threw a, a left hand in that fight. I was just, you know, kind of using my left to hold him off a little bit, and it was just constant right after right, and it was just too predictable. And uh, and 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 my guard was shocking, like I say, and I, and I got my eye split and 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 called after around about a minute in the pit, um, which I was devastated about, but. To be honest, like with, with anything, like I, I, th I think the the title were gifted to me. You know, the the opportunity for the title was gifted to me. I, I don't don't feel like I earned it. Um, so, you know, I I, I took the result as you know I, I took it on the on the chin, so to speak. And uh, you know, I I wish Pelly all 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 the all the all the luck in the world for for defending his title when he when he fights when, uh, March 18th on a, on his next outing and and, I, and there's a part of me that kind of wants him to win his next fight because if if I win this then I got a shot at the title again so you know uh, it'd be great to have a rematch and and see how he coats my left as well as my right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well. You know, I mean, I think the future is uh, is very, very bright because obviously in terms of fighting, obviously this is the early days of, of your journey. And to be honest, I think there's some massive fights out there that are yet to come. And, um, you know, myself personally and a lot of people watching this, we're all looking forward to seeing them. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously you're, you're game for anything. Um, I mean, I think that life has, you know, hit you a lot harder than any person could do, if you get what I mean. So, you know, there's nothing to worry about getting in there. So um, in that way, so you, I think you've got like a mental edge in some ways, you know, and i um, excited to see what the future will bring, getting a, getting a belt. As we move towards the tail end of this, um, I'd like to talk about sort of two, two subjects, if you like, that are the last two things, if you like. One of them is that, one of them is the future in terms of where you would like to be with your fighting career, say... Say a year from now, let's give it something like that where it's, it's not too far, you know, like a, like say if we catch up a year from today, where where's the dream? Where would you hope you'd be by then? That's the first thing. Uh, to be honest, Liam, I don't know how long I've got left in the fighting. Um in the fighting. Um like I say, I've got I've got numerous blood clots in my in my left leg. Um, I am supposed to be on blood thinners, but they won't prescribe me and while I'm uh, while I'm fighting because of the risks. Obviously, I've yeah. got a, I've got an appointment with the hematologist to to work about taking them while I'm training, but then stop before a fight. Uh, so I don't know how long I've got left in it, but I don't want to give up until I've got a belt. That's 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 the dream. I want to get the belt and I want to defend it before before I I think about. Hanging, hanging the uh, the boats up, you know. Because there's no gloves anymore. <laughs> so I'm not doing gloved anymore. It's just too much fun in my knuckle. Yeah, absolutely. Well, getting a belt, you know, absolutely 
I hope you do, man. I mean, I hope you do. I mean, I would say personally, I would say from, you know, from the outside looking in, from looking at your life, from where I'm sitting, the fact you're getting in there and doing this at all, considering where you've come from, you know, you've proved what can be done and you've proved, you know, some people wrong, some people right, however you want to look at it, you've proved that. Yeah, getting a belt would be the cherry on the top. And I see no reason why not, man. I mean, you're game for anything. So I hope you do. Um, so that's the future plans. And the only other thing, really, that I wanted to bring up with you before we wrap this up, because I keep them to about somewhere between 40 minutes and an hour, because you know what people's attention spans are like, you know, for, for anything too long. So before we wrap it up, um, your advice, basically, for people who are struggling i mean your advice for people who are going through any of these types of things that you've been through with drugs with a di- with an addiction with um some of the mental health side of things which often goes with it either first or afterwards you know depending on what it is for people um any of that type of stuff i don't i really don't mind what form it takes but just the advice that you give people that they can overcome their demons in a way that you've overcome yours and i know it obviously it's daily it's still going to be a fight for you um to some extent daily you know up, upstairs because it is for for everybody but in terms of like basically someone's in the, in the situation you were in or something similar what would you say to those people out there basically the only th- i i tried my whole you know i've tried for years and years and years to to get clean off my own steam and and what i what i realized was that i was the problem um the drugs were just something that I used to uh, try and to try and cope with that, to try and deal with that. Um, you know, I, I, there's there's a the only thing that ever that, that work that works for me and works for millions and millions and millions and millions of people around the world is twelve step recovery. Um, that that's 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 where the magic is. That is where the magic is. You know, I've I've recently kind of forgot, forgotten that and 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 drifted away from it, but I you know I, through doing through doing some work on myself, I gained an awareness and 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 I know that's where I need to be. So you know, I'm I'm currently plugging back into that, and 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 God willing, I'll get another day clean. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I mean, I really think that this this today is. Um... Super inspirational, first of all, super, super inspirational. And I mean, the thing is, um, I don't know if you if you necessarily see it that way because it's, it's your life, but what you've overcome is absolutely amazing. And I hope that you you realise how amazing it is, um, even though I'm sure that it's still, you know, it's still a battle for you. I'm sure it must still be a battle for you now. But I mean, how far you've come from where you come from to where you are now, absolutely incredible and and the reason i wanted to put this out there obviously you're a hell of a fighter man i mean you're a great fighter you're exciting to watch and i'm not just saying it to, to blow smoke or anything you know you've you got that game mentality you've got that warrior mentality but the thing is what you represent as a human being that's just incredible man and, and like i say what one man can do another can do and if anyone's out there and they're basically they're out of hope or whatever they, they're thinking man you know there's, there's no way out of this situation whether it's drug addiction or whether it's other similar things you know alcoholism obviously gambling I mean there's a lot of things that people get caught up in to escape I had one guy on here a few weeks ago um all about sex addiction you know it was that was his thing it was all about like all the time you know being being into it with different girls and that the same thing because he had issues inside and I would say that you know what you're saying about the work on yourself addressing you know who you are addressing not needing to escape and uh, in the same way and all that type of stuff it's some powerful words of wisdom in there. So uh, before we wrap this up, is there anything else that you would like to say to your supporters, anyone else you'd like to give a shout out to, or uh, anyone that you'd like to thank or give a mention to? I do hate being put on the spot. <laughs> Sorry, my man. Sorry. It's a big question, but just sponsors, anyone? Uh, I'd like to I'd like to give a shout out to, to Dean Hunt, uh, Robbie Adamson, um, Darren Wilson, Mark O'Connell, uh, and Naomi from Off Streets on Sports. She's she's sponsoring me on my next upcoming fight, 18th of March, Bradford Hotel. It's uh, it's live on pay per view on Combat Sports now. Um, yeah, 
I think that's it. I think that's it. But yeah. uh, stay tuned because the Tan Man's bringing the heat on the 18th of March. Absolutely, yeah. Well, no doubt you'll get the win. Best of luck for it, my man. You know, um, we're all excited to uh, to see you do your thing, and I'll be watching uh, one way or another, even if it's on a pay per view or whatever I can do. Um, but a lot of other people will be as well. And I want to thank you for coming on here and for being an, an open book. You know, because we've walked through things um, in in quite a sort of a straightforward way of like of like uh, the timeline. But it's good because it just it shows people what's possible. And I know there's always more areas we could go off into. But hey, when you've had a few more fights, we'll do another one. Um, but in the meantime, I want to thank you for being an open book. I want to thank you for uh, speaking about such personal stuff from the heart. You know what I mean? And I am going to say, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, this is actually Scott's first interview. And it's actually the first time, to the best of my knowledge, that he's put this out there in um this type of way what a brave thing to do and if there was an audience i would be saying to crap about now because um you know if there was like a live audience with everyone in seats i would be saying clap you know like just like this but you know alas it's, it's all on the internet but i've just got mad respect for you sharing it so the last thing for me to do is just to say thank you for your time and thank you so much for coming on the show my friend thank you for having me Liam. honestly a pleasure Thank you very much for watching um please subscribe to the simply inspired youtube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon